Hello, I've decided to look into the story behind uh, Molly Pitcher. I've, I've been telling my high school students in history classes a brief story about this young woman who was uh, carrying water for thirsty soldiers at the Battle of Monmouth during the American Nation. Uh, her husband was wounded while he was working the artillery, uh, and she stepped in to continue his job. Apparently, a cannon may have rolled through her legs, and she continued working, uh, firing the cannons and, and such. So who is this real Molly Pitcher? is what I want to look into. Molly uh, may have been a common name for any number of female uh, camp followers, which we'll get into in a little bit, or maybe another name for Mary. It was common for the army to have women follow behind. Usually they were related. Uh, some were prostitutes, some cooked, did laundry, carried water, and did other important tasks like bringing water to clean out the cannons. Uh, the only real primary sources we have are two. Joseph Plum Martin tells a story. And in, in his journal, he says a woman, no name given, was seen at the Battle of Monmouth um, helping her husband work an artillery piece. Five days after the battle was over, a surgeon re, uh, repeated the story he heard from a wounded soldier uh, that said a woman had taken the place of a fallen soldier. Again, we don't know a name. So the legend of Molly Pitcher was born from these two little pieces of information. And it's amazing that it's still around more than 200 years later with as little as we have about that. Uh, historians Historians seem sure that there was a heroic act performed during the Battle of Monmouth by, by a woman. Uh, she was somehow connected to artillery unit, came from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and her husband's name was Hayes. Uh, George Washington did issue 25 orders concerning women, so we know there were women around the Continental Army. Uh, exactly who this person was, uh, we're not quite sure. Um, uh, the actual heroine was either probably Mary Hayes or Margaret Corbin or even a representation of all women who helped during the revolution. I'll go through a few of these. John Landis wrote a book in 1905 and concluded that Mary Hayes was the real heroine. Uh, her husband was John Hayes, served with the artillery. And when his company came close to home, she joined up, brought water to the troops, ended up taking her husband's spot when he was injured. Uh, unfortunately, he did not record his sources, so we don't know where a lot of this information comes from. A uh, Carlisle newspaper editor, uh, Jeremiah Zemer, uh, points out a lot of flaws in Landis's argument. He claims that Mary Hayes wasn't actually called Molly Pitcher uh, for 40 years after her death. His conclusion was that uh, the story of Molly Pitcher was just fiction, uh, and he didn't think women could uh, fire cannons anyway in, in the battlefield, uh, although uh, it was recorded from neighbors saying they heard her, her say, Mary Hayes it is, say that she was actually at the Battle of Monmouth. I uh, didn't say what she did there, but she said she was actually there. Historian Todd White uh, told a story. Uh, he says it's probably just camp followers, not a specific uh, woman. Um, and again, Molly could have been a number of women that were running around with water buckets, cleaning out cannons, a very important and crucial part of, of any fight. Uh, he thinks Martin wasn't surprised to see a woman doing this, so that's why he did not mention one specific lady. Uh, Linda DePaul uh, believes that Molly Pitchers was a name also given to just uh, women working for the Army carrying water to clean cannons. She does not think that this Molly Pitcher was bringing water to drink. Uh, she says because too cold of water on such a hot day over 100 degrees may have killed some of the troops, and she got uh, you know, a surgeon to back her up on that. Historian Janice McKinney uh, did not believe women played major roles, thought Mary Hayes was simply bringing troops drinks of water. Another historian, D.W. Thompson, who's from Carlisle, thinks the whole story was made up and, is, and was just telling a, a tall tale. Uh, it does appear from, from research that uh, the consensus is that Mary Hayes was the real person behind this myth uh, that is still remembered. Uh, there was a uh, record of Molly McCauley with a K-O-L-L-Y that received a pension in 1822, uh, not for being a widow of war, but something she did. So this would fit the story of Mary Hayes, who married a John McCauley after her husband died. Uh, both of them were illiterate, so their names could have been spelled wrong anyway. That may have been her. Uh, regardless of who the real Mo Molly Pitcher was, uh, historians still aren't sure, she was a very important figure that, that was a symbol uh, for the Revolutionary War, what people would do to help, and also for all the women who participated uh, and made it possible to, to win that great struggle. I do have a picture of, of her uh, grave. Again, this was kind of controversial. Uh, for some historians, others said this is kind of representation over the grave of Mary Hayes in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. There's the cannon and, and there's a gravesite. Again, thanks for watching.